does composting really make a difference or do we do it to make ourselves feel better? And, better question, is composting really the stuff of reality TV? Well, we're going to find that out today. Welcome to FaceTime. I'm Dan McLennan. Joining me in the studio is Campbell Rivers Sustainability Manager, Amber Zernheld, and Sustainability Co-op student, Amanda Taylor. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. There's an awful lot happening, it seems, right now related to composting. And we've all been encouraged to do it for some time, but the city does it more often now. The pickup comes around more often than it used to. And there seems to be more different little elements on the go. Uh, we were talking before the show about Earth Week Film Fest was another one of these maybe watershed moments. Tell me what happened there and what that's led to. Sure. So this year was our third annual Earth Week Film Festival which is a partnership with School District 72 and the Comox Strathcona Waste Management Service. And each year we focus on ways that our community can get involved in reducing their environmental footprint with a focus on students and what's happening in the schools. And this year's focus was around waste reduction. So we had a fantastic feature film called The Clean Bin Project, which really inspired us to look at how we could creatively challenge our community to reduce our waste. And we're going to get to that creative challenge in just a moment. Backtrack, background, what is a sustainability manager? A sustainability manager is a person that works with a community to advise on planning for the future of the community, looking beyond what's happening immediately now, but looking to the future for our children, our grandchildren, and looking at issues ranging from planning to environmental management, waste reduction, energy, how we make our community a great livable place and resilient for the future and changes that we might see in our economy and in social issues as well. Amanda, what does it take to become a sustainable co-op student? A sustainability co-op student. You don't want to be a sustainable co-op student. You want, to, you want to evolve beyond that, I'm sure. Definitely. So I'm a student at the University of Victoria, and that's how I got involved in the co-op program. And I was able to do this as my third and final co-op work term. And I am very fortunate to be working in the sustainability department with Amber and, and Terry as well, who's the environmental coordinator. So that's how I ended up here in Campbell River. Terry Martin, environmental coordinator. So what have we got you doing here in Campbell River? So what I do as, a, as the sustainability co-op student is I work on a variety of different projects that the department works on. So that's everything from waste reduction projects to the provincial wood stove exchange program as well as some other educational and public outreach events and everything. So. So there are a lot of different things on the go. The wood stove exchange has been underway for a while here in Campbell River. Yeah. The Blue Box program started a few years ago, but now it's, it, at that point, it was every other week, I think. Now yeah, we're now to weekly recycling. We've seen our, our waste aversion statistics really improve, so that's, that's really great news. Let's, let's back up and talk about that for a second then. What is the goal when we talk about the recycling project? Obviously, what we're trying to do is keep stuff out of the landfill. How, mm -hmm. effect, how effective have we been? Yeah, well, well, right now we are currently diverting about 38% of uh, waste that could otherwise be going to the landfill. So that's through our recycling, uh, blue box program, um, yard waste pickup. And this is just at the curbside. So there's even more happening with people taking electronics, for example, to be recycled. Um, but we have, we have quite an uh, opportunity for improvement. Um, so with the composting, approximately 35% of material going to the landfill is compost. And not only is that a challenge because our landfill is at capacity and we need more space for, um, for disposing of material, but environmentally, um, compost contributes to methane gas as it breaks down in the landfill, and that's um, one of the uh, most potent greenhouse gases, so a concern for climate change as well. And so this leads us to the Waste Watchers Compost Video Challenge, and that's <laughs> Waste, W-A-S-T-E. Uh, Amanda, what are we talking about here? Right, so what we have for this Waste 
waste reduction challenge is, well, it's a compost challenge, really. So what I've been doing over the past week is I've been interviewing 20 families, and we are going to be choosing five families for this 30-day kind of reality TV style compost challenge that we have going on this summer. So I've been stationed at the Compost Education Center for the past few days, and families have been coming up there, and I've been filming their kind of one-minute pitches, and it's been really interesting to see, you know, the barriers that these families have had to composting, why they, why they don't, or why they've given up, and just their stories. And so we're actually going to have a panel of five judges uh, over the next week look at these interview videos, and then they'll be choosing the five families, and from there, the families will be embarking on this compost journey. It'll also be a challenge, so they're going to be competing against the other, you know, other five families, and they're going to be going for, you know, who has the best compost, who is generating the least amount of waste, and just who's, who's funny, who's the funniest family out there, so. Okay, who dreamed up the concept of compost <laughs> as reality TV? Where, where did you guys catch wind of this? Well, I think, I think it really um, emerged from the Clean Bin Project, where we had that feature film at the Earth Week Film Festival, and it was about a young couple in Vancouver who documented their journey of trying to reduce waste, and it was really funny. So not only is it teaching some tips for how we can um, make a difference in reducing what we're sending to the landfill, but it made it a funny process, and we thought, you know, this could be something engaging in the community. And it was actually um, our green team at the city and uh, a variety of individuals who brainstormed the idea after watching the Clean Bin Project and hearing about the results of that. You make it sound almost as exciting as a contact sport. The journey, <laughs> the journey of composting. Just it sounds, <laughs> dare I say it, romantic. Uh, <laughs> You've been working on a video trailer to promote the Waste Watchers compost video challenge. Can we have a look at that? Join our video compost challenge and win an iPad. Campbell River Waste is piling up fast. Every day we are creating an enormous amount of garbage. Our landfill is already maxing out. Now in this patch of garbage, we've got some watermelon skins we've got some more apples we've got lots of good rotting lots of good rotting compostable material we even have hair which can be composted as well help us to reduce our organic waste and create good taste with your own garden produce you don't know how then you're our perfect candidate five households will receive a free composter and a brand new ipad we will train you on how to turn waste into soil and how to share your experience with the ipad we started composting because um, I was kind of feeling bad about all, all the food waste we were throwing into the garbage and I know that waste is a huge problem and I want to do my part. Well, we compost so we can make dirt and we can plant food and flowers. It has never been easier and more fun to make Campbell River a greener place. Apply now and win. Apply now and win. You've talked to 20 families or so. That's going to be narrowed down to five. Five families. What are you going to put these people through? <laughs> it's going to be interesting. So what they're going to have to do is they're going to be given uh, an iPad or a video camera and they're going to be filming their compost journey over the 30-day challenge. So every week they're going to have a task list, basically, of different things that they have to film. And, you know, that could be anything from their kids taking out the compost to the backyard composter or filming funny discussions about composting around the table. So that's one of the things that they'll be doing, um, along with, you know, weekly check-ins with me to see how they're going, how they're doing, and um, just overcoming those barriers to composting, so. And so are you, uh, from a quantity or quantitative perspective, are you measuring their garbage, weighing their garbage, weighing their compost, doing that sort of thing to determine uh, what, how much we're diverting? Definitely. Before the challenge starts, we'll be weighing all of the family's garbage, and then after the challenge ends, we'll be weighing it as well to see what differences there are there. So. And you have people lining up who <laughs> want you to come weigh their garbage <laughs> so that then they can enter the compost video challenge. Now, it's a 30-day period. Right. It's not all the same 30-day period, is it? Or is there, like, no. do all five families go at once, or is it over the course of the summer, sort of? 
Yeah, so the families can choose between um, July 1st and August 15th, a period of 30 consecutive days, whatever works with them in terms of summer schedules. So that's what we have. And when the five families are determined, then we'll be setting up all those dates. And so after their 30 days are over, you, uh, what are your judging criteria then? What's, uh, what's going to separate the, uh, the winners from the losers? Basically, they'll be judged on you know how funny their videos are, what kind of quality of compost that they have actually generated from all of their composting, um, things from you know the actual number of compost uh, compost weight that they have and garbage reduction numbers, and um, what other things do we have? Uh, we'll be we'll be looking at overall habits. So have they have they really created um, a composting as a new habit for their family? And so we'll have we'll have a few tips and tricks for our judges to figure out if that's uh, something that we think they're going to be sticking with. Um, and part of that will be looking at the quality of the compost and some of the moments that are captured on the video and so getting a sense of you know what changes it's making for them for their lifestyle too. Yeah. Now I hear, I hear quality of the compost which to me almost <laughs> sounds like a contradiction in terms I know what my compost pile looks like. Uh, are, are we expecting these people to have usable compost at the end of a 30-day period? No, no, but Good. our, Good. <laughs> our um, compost educator will be taking a look to make sure that the compost process is working. Um, so she'll be looking to make sure you know there aren't a lot of bugs or things like that. Some of the things that might be concerns for families, so we don't want stinky compost, we don't want it smelly, we don't want it full of full of bugs, those kinds of things. And so they're going to get hands-on training from the compost educator so that they can learn how to create good quality compost. And so when are we going to hear a winner? What's our target date for? Our target is for um, late August, uh, for sure by the end of August. And uh, we'll definitely be doing a lot of media promotion and having a blog site that um, you can follow the families and how they're doing. And that'll be through the City of Campbell River website. So June 8th was the deadline for people to uh, apply. You've, had, you've talked to at least 20, so that you, you, obviously you're happy with the, with the turnout. Definitely. We're really happy with the number of families that I've been doing the interviews with and we've got a lot of great quality interviews, a lot of interested families. So, And then on Wednesday, June 20th, we actually announced the five families. So, Now composting, it seems the, the recycling is easy if I have a big blue bin and I can just throw things in there and all I really have to do is carry it out to the curb and carry it, the empty container back. Whereas composting has some stigma attached to it in some people's eyes because you're dealing with a, uh, a livelier type of garbage, shall we say. <laughs> uh, is that a big part of this process, not just the, the video challenge, but the, the effort in general to increase composting is to get people past phobias. There, people think of rotting food out in my backyard is not an appetizing or appealing thing. Uh, how do you get around that? Yeah, exactly. So with this program, we're hoping to show that composting actually isn't that hard and that uh, it can be pretty fun for a family uh, to, to start composting and, and maybe even use the soil that's produced from the compost for their garden or start a small garden box. So we're having compost workshops. Uh, we'll be having the families share some of the tips and things they're learning along the way. And we're also doing a compost rebate program at the same time where people in the community that are interested in starting composting, they can learn hands-on from our compost educator with special workshops and hands-on training, and they get a rebate of $50 off a composter of their choice purchased anywhere, um, as long as they submit a photo of them with their composter and the receipt and get a voucher number from us. And so those rebates are going like wildfire. We've, uh, we've had some great response from the community, and actually we've been pleased to have the funding in place. We've got a grant that's enabled us to re, um, release an additional 50 rebates. So we are already up, I think, Amanda will know the number. Where are we at with our rebates? We're at just under 100 right now. So it's there's a lot. There's a lot going through. And yeah, it's been really great. People are calling me, and they're just so excited about this composter rebate. So it's And this really is 100 or so in the last month, maybe? It hasn't been that long you've been offering, has it? 
Yeah, really, um, the, the rebates became available at the home show at the beginning of May, but we didn't really start promoting it um, until the middle of May. And so it's just in the last couple of weeks, the phones are ringing off the hook, and we're really pleased with the response. We're hoping this really does make a big impact in the waste that we're diverting from the landfill. So we'll be measuring that with five families as our case examples and then reporting back to the community on how we're doing. I guess it's important to try and get, from a planning perspective, to get a feel for maybe what an average family compost diversion rate is, and then you can extrapolate that to your hundred or, or more uh, rebates going out there just to give you an idea as to how effective this latest program is. Yeah, you bet. That's, that's the plan. And right now we, now we know that the average family in Campbell River produces about 372 kilograms of garbage each year that's collected at the curbside. So approximately 35% of that can be diverted if they're not already composting. So we're, we're definitely going to be looking at how our families do that are in the challenge and um, providing our community with some information on how they can compost and what the benefits are for them as well. Now, once again, our intrepid FaceTime Streeter team went out to offer some FaceTime to you. And this time we asked, are you composting? And uh, what else are you doing for the environment? Let's have a look at those clips. I recycle everything. I got in the habit about four or five years ago, and I didn't realize how much plastic and recyclables I was actually sending out to the landfill. And I mean, landfills are gonna run out. And if we can reuse this stuff, you know, well, I guess that's my bit for the planet. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad to see that it's caught on. Um, I could use two or three more buckets if somebody wants to send me a blue bucket to my house, just look me up and drop them off. I recycle everything I can um, for refund and all as well as um, plastics and tin and cardboard, you name it, and I try not to burn too much because I don't like to pollute as well. And um, I do the most I can do. I compost everything and we put it back into our garden and yeah. Totally, all pro. I recycle, but I haven't done the composting thing yet. And I, I was just reading in the paper yesterday about it. You can buy the thing and do it. Yeah, so I'm thinking about doing that. Yeah, I've just never ever done it before. I used to do it when I was younger, like growing up. I live in an apartment and I, I recycle what I can, but I don't have a compost thing. I recycle, I don't compost. I don't know how, I just don't have the, facilities for it at home so but I do recycle everything no composting recycling and why no composting just don't <laughs> no reason why uh -huh. just don't we keep all our cardboard put it in our recycle clean up all our plastic put that in our recycle try and buy things that don't have excessive packaging and that's about it I can't actually compost in the garden I'm not comfortable doing that where I live because there's bears in the area so, if we can find a way around that, I'll do that too. Oh yeah, there's bears too. That's another thing to throw in. Uh, it sounds like, in some ways, you've got lots of potential there. Lots of people recycling, mm -hmm. not so many composting, at least based on that. Uh, and maybe that comes back to us earlier saying it's a little bit easier. Uh, what about this uh, statement, okay, I live in an apartment, I don't have a garden, I don't have a yard that I can do this in, uh, so there's no need for me or there's no way for me to compost. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. So if you're in an apartment, one of the options is to use a worm bin. And we actually have one of those at City Hall that we use. Um, so worm bins actually can work quite effectively for a family's compost. And you can take the bit of compost that's produced out to a flower bed outside. Um, it's not a huge volume. And so that's some, one option for apartments. Many communities are looking at um, 
community-wide compost facilities where, similar to a blue box program, you would have a curbside compost program, and that's something that our regional district is currently looking at for the whole Comox Valley and Campbell River area, Strathcona Regional District. So there's lots of potential there. Uh, do we have any examples up and running? You mentioned the worm bin at City Hall. Do we have any examples of apartment blocks in town or anything like that that have gone that one step further and are trying to do the group compost? Not yet, although um, there are folks that are in apartments that are in the process of um, getting plots in a community garden, so looking at opportunities for more communal composting, uh, maybe at a uh, community garden site. Um, so we're really excited with the potential for um, supporting multifamily um, households and apartment buildings to do that type of initiative, take on composting. It sounds like it scares some people uh, and we hear it stinks or it <laughs> might and I don't want to attract bears, I don't want to upset the neighbors. Uh, this is part of the education process. If you do your composting properly, you should be not creating a stink or attracting bears. Is that the, is that essentially the message? It's not as dangerous or as bad as some people might think. That's right. Yeah. So you know, when I'm doing these interviews with these families, I'm hearing all of these myths. You know, there's not enough time. There's there's bears. There's rodents. It smells. People just you know, there's this effort that people don't want to put into it. And these families that I've been interviewing and other people that I've been talking to, they really want to overcome those barriers because they can see the value in composting and, and you know, the greater environmental beneficial impacts that there are there. So it's really, it's really about, you know, educating people and just showing people how easy it is. And once you're set up, once you know how to do it, it's, it becomes a part of your daily routine. So, and I think that's why this 30-day uh, video compost challenge will be so great because we're going to end up putting it into this hour-long film and then that will be that will be available on YouTube and on, on Shaw and everything so people will be able to see in the community this video and you know relate to these other families that have done this challenge and kind of say okay if they can do it maybe I can as well and then we have the rebate program which complements that so indeed is it possible to be an effective composter if I'm not a gardener like what am I gonna do with this stuff yeah, you bet. And actually, one of the programs that's really popular right now is the Green Cone program that the Regional District and Compost Education Center have been offering. And so a green cone is basically it's a digester and it's, it's buried into the ground a couple feet down, it uses sun and microbacteria to break down compost and it actually is absorbed into the soil. So rather than producing a soil that you would use in your garden, it's absorbed right into your yard and you only have to move those um, every, every few years. And another really neat thing about the green cone is that it can take dairy products and it can take meat and bones. And I believe there's been over 400 last year that were um, distributed throughout um, both the Comox Valley and the Campbell River area. And of those, they have not had any problems with bears or rodents or anything reported. So that's, that's another system um, of composting that is a great opportunity for families who maybe aren't into gardening or want something even lower maintenance than a typical composter. And we also have been offering rebates for the green cones as well. Oh, is that, is that program still in effect? Um, it is. We, we have um, 50 um, green cones right now that have been pre-ordered. They had to be pre-ordered in May, but we are keeping a waiting list for other folks that might be interested. And if there's enough interest, I believe the regional district will look at a future date for another order of the green cones. So the green cone is a separate type of uh, compost digester than the earth machine. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not a case of me taking compost from the earth machine and loading it into the green cone. Nope, you, the green cone is the only thing that you need and uh, a bit of sunshine and a little bit of the microbacteria that come with it. So you, it's very low maintenance and that's a really, really good step for folks that are worried about having to maintain the appropriate balance in their compost or wondering what to do with the soil. It's a really nice option. Well, and that's one of the things we hear is people saying, yeah, it's too complicated. If I don't do this right, it's just going to sit there and smell bad. It's not going to turn into compost. So part of the education process is to show people how to do this. How complex is it? It's it's 
pretty easy actually. So with the green cone, it's kind of like a, a dump and run sort of system. So yeah. really simple, that's easy enough to do. The hardest part is digging the hole, but that can be pretty fun for people. And then, you know, with other composters like the Earth Machine, for example, it's all about the layering. So you want your, your browns, your greens, and, and then just, you know, sticks, yard waste. It's all about layering for the Earth Machines. So, um, and aerating as well. So it's a good it's a good system once you have it down and um, you know emptying your food your food caddy from your kitchen every every day if possible and that's it's quite simple. <laughs> now it used to be we heard the concept oh I was out I was out turning the compost pile and that it was there was you know there was a weekend set aside for somebody to do back breaking labor to heave this thing over the aerator is a great advancement because it saves you the trouble of doing that. Are, are you, I take it along with this uh, rebate program, are you also getting people their handy little aerators, which you essentially go out there and just punch into your, into your uh, compost and, and lift, right? Just to poke some, get some air throughout the whole thing. That's right. The aerators are, it's highly recommended that if someone purchases an earth machine or even if they purchase a composter um, from another retailer, they can pick up aerators um, either at the compost education center or from stores that carry them and they're, they're a great tool and they usually run around $15 so yep. it's not a big, uh, big expense. And actually with our rebate program, some composters um, are, are as cheap as, as um, costing the homeowner only $15 to purchase after the rebate. So, so the rebate's quite substantial. A rebate of $50 um, can get someone set up quite quickly with a composter. And we wanted to make it something that everybody could do. And if you are a gardener and you have use for uh, soil amendments, there's also a uh, a, a financial payback there given the amount of compostable end product that you can use in your garden. So I guess you have to factor that cost in as well. You bet. It's a great opportunity for gardeners. Now, it, I always thought of this in the past as a regional district initiative. Uh, we have the, the Compost Education Center uh, up at uh, Pinecrest and Dogwood. This, is, this represents more the city getting into it some more as well, does it not? It's a partnership, so we're, our funding is actually from the regional district for this program and we're working with the um, Compost Education Centre on the project. Um, but the city saw it as an opportunity to apply for some grant funding to help divert waste from the landfill because ultimately, um, as our landfill is at capacity, we need to be reducing the waste that we're sending there. And, and that, if we reduce our waste, not only is it good for the environment, but it saves the city and taxpayers money that we would otherwise be paying for uh, dumping material at the landfill. So the Waste Watchers Compost Video Challenge will soon be underway. The 20 or so families that you have interviewed will be narrowed down to five uh, lucky competitor, competitive teams. Uh, they will have 30 days. Winner will be chosen. When do you hope to have this hour-long, essentially educational video tool ready for the public? Well, I think that video will be ready in October, which is Waste Reduction Month. So it'll take some time for our professional videographer to put together all of the family's clips that they will be submitting every week to me. So after that, then we'll have this great educational tool, which is the video, to share with community members and, you know, even worldwide. So it'll be great. And in the meantime, people should be going to the city website, www.campbellriver.com. Uh, and looking .ca. For, .ca, sorry, uh, and looking for the links that will take them and keep them updated as to where this project is going, as well as the compost rebates and whatnot. That sounds great, you bet. A lot happening. And I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today, but my guests have been Campbell River Sustainability Manager Amber Zernheld and Sustainability Co-op student Amanda Taylor. Thank you both for joining us. Good luck with the Waste Watchers Compost Challenge. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure I want to be a judge if I have to weigh other people's garbage, but well, <laughs> hopefully it's a hands-off kind of thing. Anyway, thank you both. Uh, time for a little bit of business, taking care of business, viewer comment. Uh, after FaceTime number nine with Island Corridor Foundation co-chair Mary Ashley, we t where we talked about resurrecting and possibly expanding the ENN railway, uh, Stacy Larson said that the train is, quote, the best way to travel by far. 
Someone under the moniker of Widgie Widgie said, informative interview, thanks. And a Glenn Migno said, uh, please have Jack Peake from the ENN Railway Action Group on your show to respond to Mary Ashley's comments and to give their concerns uh, and talk about why commuter rail in the Victoria region would make sense first and that I think is the initiative of the EN Railway Action Group. Anyway, thanks for your comments. Uh, of course, we'd like to hear what you think of the show or who you'd like to see on the show. Uh, here's how to get a hold of us. You can like us and comment on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash FaceTime for you. That's the number four. Or you can email us at FaceTime, that's face-time at shaw.ca. You might be surprised to know, I was surprised to know, uh, that we've been liked from as far away as Mexico, Brazil, India and Vietnam from Tijuana to Lisbon and the bustling metropolis of Vanderhoof. So please keep those likes coming. And so ends FaceTime number 10. Yes, we've hit double figures. I'm Dan McLennan. Thanks for sharing some FaceTime.